What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. It is chicken processing day and uh, we're about to get this show on the road. The birds back here don't know what's coming yet, but they'll know soon. Before we begin, I just wanted to say that this is not going to be a tutorial video. This is not a how-to. This is more of a um, be conscious of where your food comes from type of video and maybe a make fun of these two nitwits video. I don't know. It's not our first time. This is actually now our third time uh, processing our meat birds and we've gotten okay at it. We were smart enough to ask a friend to come over and help us this time. So our friend Lacey is gonna come over and help us out and uh, that should make this go a little bit quicker. This time, instead of only having one cone to process them, we've got four cones. So that should make things go a whole lot faster. The other day I was scrolling on Instagram and I passed by, uh, what is it, Little Mountain Ranch, and she said something that I felt was uh, spot on and perfect. If you are a meat eater, then at some point, you should experience what it means to be a meat eater. That means that your meat is processed before you ever see it. You should really know where that food comes from. What is that process like? How does that food get from these lovely living birds to your plate? I mean, the reality of it is, is you've got to kill these birds or you can't eat them. It's not something that I love to do. I actually hate this. Uh, you spend so much time raising these birds and you feel really good about what you're doing, but there's an end to it. These birds are going to be meat for my family. They're gonna be meat for other people's families that uh, share in our uh, food crop, I guess you could say, our meat crop. Someone had recently asked us, how do you get yourself psyched up for this? How do you get yourself prepared to, to take the life of these birds? Next to drinking a lot of coffee, Cool mug by the way, right? I play some music that gets me pumped up and I just keep telling myself how good that chicken is gonna taste once it's been processed. So that's it. If you haven't watched a video on how meat is processed or you haven't done it yourself or seen it in person, I highly recommend it. Again, this isn't gonna be a video where you're gonna get a lot of that. This is more about our experience and more about well, hey, we're in Vlogist, and this is what we're doing today, folks, so that's what I'm going to film. Mmm. Coffee tastes so much better when it's in Life on Beagle Road mug, you know? All right, enough John. Let's get to it, folks. Alright, so the way we work the process to start is that uh, Robbie here, come on here Robbie, say hello to everybody. Robbie here is my gopher. He's going to gopher all the birds and bring them over to me. 
I'm gonna take care of the part. And then Courtney and Lacey over here. Say hi, ladies. Or don't say a word, just mute. That's fine, that's cool. They're gonna take care of the gutting because Kenny doesn't touch the guts. Mm -mm. Nope, I don't do it. I don't do it, not gonna happen. Something about all that slimy, gross, I don't know. Uh-uh, not gonna do it. As a matter of fact, I don't even cut the chicken up. I don't do chicken like that. That's not for me. It's slimy, it's gross. I'm just not gonna do it. I'll cut me a pig. I'm not doing these chickens. So that's going to Courtney. Well, Courtney, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, you don't touch chicken. I get it. All right, Robbie, let's get this show in a row. Go get me a bird, all right? Ready for this? Oh boy. First one's always my hardest. All right, Court, how many we uh, get through so far? Three in the cooler, I'm on the fourth one. Three in the cooler, fourth one. Lacey's got one coming out of the plucker, and we got one hanging up. So, one in the ice bath, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, already done. So I think we've been at it for maybe 30 minutes, and we're trucking along pretty good. We're almost to the halfway point, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. We're getting there, we are getting there. Halfway? Yeah, halfway. Where'd you get your math skills? Don't question my math. If we're at like seven and halfway is 12, we're almost to the halfway point. You be quiet, keep gutting. You're supposed to be homeschooling our kids. I'm not homeschooling our kids, they'd fail. Nobody would get a degree, ever. Let's get Lacey playing with the naked chicken. All right, we're doing pretty good here. Still trucking through. Robbie, did you count how many birds there were left? Yeah, 13. 13 left, so we're officially at the midpoint, which is fantastic. Uh, having a small issue with the scalder. If any of you have ever used one of these like turkey fryers to do your scalding, then you know exactly what my pain is. Either it blows out or you can't keep the temperature in that 140 to 150 range and you're just constantly fighting with it. One day we'll get something that's actually going to work a whole lot better, but for right now we're going to live with it and uh, just keep trucking. How's it going? Good, you're very close. I am very close. Emmy's in a tree. Careful, baby. You only have flip flops on. Then you probably shouldn't go any higher. Keep up the good work. Hey, thanks. You're welcome. All right, I'm taking a small time out. Uh, I may or may not have had a little bit of an accident. That's right, cut my finger a little bit. It was painful. Normally when I, uh, when I go at it, keep my finger away 
and uh, a sucker moved quickly you know adjusted my grip and finished the cut unfortunately finished the cut got my finger be very careful when you do this folks also make sure that you've got a fantastic first aid kit in your wood shop just in case you have a mistake also I guess maybe you have to have a wood shop first huh not everybody has one of those Oh, you're doing a fantastic job, baby. I'm the best. Just a few left over, not too bad though, right? Yeah, not too bad. Could be worse. Yeah. There's water on that lens. Well, that's not good. I guess I should clean that off. You should. Let's see how our coolers are looking in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, not yet. Chicken feet for the dogs or stock, whichever one. Some livers, definitely for the dogs. I'm not eating those. All right, Robbie says there's only seven more to go. Cause we've no idea when we're coming home. Any place we wander to. All right, great news, we are on the very last bird. Well, at least I am, Courtney's not. Emmy, how many are left in that ice chest? Three? All right, so Emmy's got three in the ice chest going over to Courtney. Robbie and I have three waiting to go over here. And then he's bringing the, uh, the next one down now. This last one that's coming uh, somehow got injured. So he's really small, he'll be some chicken stock. But that's right, one last bird to go. We'll put them all in the plucker and then we'll just uh, start cleaning up. Courtney will finish up her end of it a little while after that and then we are done for the day. Woo! How you feeling today, buddy? Good. Huh? What am I supposed to say? You're supposed to tell people how you feel. What do you mean, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. I mean, you've been pooped on twice, peed on three times, right? Yeah. How you feel? I don't know. You don't know how you feel? Like... Dirty? Gross? Yeah, gross. Tired? I feel hungry? Gross. Tired? Hungry? Those are all words you're allowed to use. Yeah. You're something else, kid. Alright, Robbie and I have completed our portion. Courtney's got three more that she needs to do. And we pretty much got it all done. At least until tomorrow, when they need all cut up or put in bags. How you feeling now, Court? A little tired. A little sap. A little sap. A lot of pool. A little pool. A lot of sap. But I'm pretty sure that's where we're going to leave it. And uh, we're going to catch you all tomorrow. So have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.